Part 2 Wire Size There is no mystery to the fact that a thicker wire will conduct more current at a given temperature. A thicker wire will have lower resistance than a comparable smaller wire. A thicker wire will have less loss than a comparable small wire. This applies to everything from AC power to DC power to audio to digital signal. So if that is a fact, why do we need to take time to look at it? We want to know what effect it has and how important it is. We could be putting a lot of stock into this fact and at the levels we are using and the lengths we are using, it might matter or it might not. First, let me explain wire gauge. Wire is measured in gauge. More specifically, American wire gauge, AWG. The lower the number, the thicker the wire. So a 12 gauge wire is thicker than a 14 gauge wire. Much of the wire we use for audio is between 26 gauge and 18 gauge, with many snake cables being fairly light, being about 26 gauge, and high-end mic cables and instrument cables being 20 to 18 gauge. Again, with audio, it is believed that a thicker wire will provide better performance than a thinner wire with everything else being equal. But there are many reasons to not want a thicker wire, which includes overall size, weight, stiffness, cost, very short runs, and the belief that is unnecessary for the application, etc. I am assuming you have been watching from the beginning, and I am not going to explain the testing again. But basically, I am doing the same test as before, but changing different variables. This time we are going to compare Megami 2524 and Megami 2319. These are similar cables with Megami 2319 being the lighter cable and Megami 2524 being the heavier cable. Here are some basic specs. Megami 2319 has a 23 gauge center conductor. At 50 feet, its capacitance is 2,365 picofarads. The resistance at 50 feet center conductor is one ohm. Megami 2524, the center conductor is 20 gauge, the capacitance at 50 feet is 1,985 picofarad, the resistance at 50 foot for the center conductor is 0.5 ohm. We'll start off with the computer simulated test on the same circuit. We'll keep the 1 mega ohm input impedance like a guitar amp input, and for reference we'll test with 100 ohm and 50 kilo ohms output impedance to simulate a guitar. Let's look at the results. The red and the brown line represent the two wires with the 100 ohm output impedance. They're basically the same. You may not even see the brown line because the red line is on top of it for most of the response. The blue and green lines are what we're interested in. Both showing a 50 kilo ohm impedance like a guitar. The blue is a 2524, the thicker wire, and the green is the 2319, the thinner wire. As you can see, the thinner wire has more loss. I did the math, and right at 10 kHz, it looks like it's less than 1.5 dB down. One major difference in the wires is the capacitance, with 2319 being 2,365 picofarad, and 2524 being 1,985 picofarad, which is lower and perhaps better. So just for the concept, because I cannot do this in real life, I decided to play with the values of the wires. Same test as before, this is the chart showing the red line with 2524 and the blue line is 2319, just like the last one with 50 kilo ohm output impedance. What you can't quite see is a green line which is directly under the blue line for 2319. For the result, I kept the resistance of 2524 and changed the capacitance to the same value as 2319. So in other words, it's like 2319 wire with a low resistance is identical to the actual 2319 response, which tells us that the capacitance of the wire has a bigger effect than the resistance of the wire. So a wire with the same capacitance and a thinner gauge may perform the same. Now let's do a real simulation with the computer and dummy loads. First, we're going to run a sweep test. Same setup as before, computer-based spectral analyzer and a high-end sound guard. I'm going to cut to the chase a bit here because 110 ohm output impedance is not that exciting. This is the results as we know it from the first test. You get a very flat response. So let's move on to the 50 kilo ohm test. Here are the results from that test. I bet I don't even need to spell it out, but I will anyway. The red line is the reference, 110 ohm impedance, 50 foot for both cables. The green line is our baseline, with one foot of cable for both 2319 and 2524. It had an identical response at one foot. 
The white line is our 2524, the thicker wire, test at 50 feet. The blue line is the 2319 wire, test at 50 feet. The roll-off starts about the same place, but by 10,000 Hz, 2319 is down about 1 dB over 2524. Okay, now we're going to do a real-world test with the guitar. Same as before, we're using an electromagnet running a sweep into the pickup. Again, I don't care about the response, just the comparison of the bass line to test the difference. The red line is both the 2319 and 2524 at one foot and used as our bass line. The white line is 50 feet of 2524 and the blue line is 50 feet of 2319. It looks like from 2500 Hz up, there is about one dB extra loss with the 2319, the thinner wire. So to conclude part two, in our basic test, the thicker wire performed better, but because of our simulation, that might be more of an effect of the cable capacitance. So a smaller cable with lower capacitance may perform better than a thicker with higher capacitance. More testing on this with a larger sampling might be required. In part three, we're going to look at the use of balance cables for guitars.